programming a clock with an Arduino is deceptively easy. It was this first actual project I tackled that stumped me a number of times. But in the end, it did help me improve some fundamental programming techniques. I still write bad code, so this segue isn't what I thought it'd be, but let's talk about Wi-Fi clocks. The benefit is you'll never have to set a clock again, so you don't have to bother writing that code anyway. Let's look at some interesting Wi-Fi clocks built on the Arduino platform. The first Wi-Fi clock is something I made with an ESP8266 and some 8x8 LED matrix modules. This clock connects to your Wi-Fi and using the EasyTime library to grab the date and time from a network time protocol server. You need to provide your time zone or an hour offset to get the right time for your area, and that's really it. The library has flexibility to pick your time and date format with some simple setup. I'm going for the non-standard US format, which is day of the week, month, day, and year, followed by the 12 hour time. And this is just pushed together in a long string. This code is a bit wonky because the LED matrix library, which is used to push text to the marquee, only works with character arrays. So all that time and date data has to be concatenated to a string we want to output, then converted to a character array. This array is going to change size throughout the different days and times, so I just use the size of command to build the array right before pushing it to the marquee. This code contains a lot of helpful outputs through the serial monitor as it connects to Wi-Fi and grabs time information. I tried to put as much of that feedback text as output to the marquee when connecting to your network because some networks are complicated. It's worth looking at the serial monitor to understand the EasyTime library better because it's so simple it's still kind of complicated. For me, this Wi-Fi clock marquee provides to be the most flexible. The LED matrix marquee can stream lots of text data, which is great for other information streaming applications. I wrote a word of the day web scraper too. This application, plus maybe web scraping for the current weather or stock prices, would make a really useful clock. I have an entire video on the word of the day web scraper, which I'll link below. I'm skipping adding the weather features to this clock because every weather website I try to HTML scrape has a really confusing tag layout. Working through an API would be better, but I don't know enough of that to be of any help. This next Wi-Fi clock uses much of the same backbone as the previous. The difference here is the hardware is under $10 in parts. Like the previous clock, it connects to your Wi-Fi, pulls the time and date using the EasyTime library. The goal here was to make a clock and write a custom library, sort of, to push the full display to output large numbers to see from a distance. The EasyTime library only gives the time as a string, and printing this as is to the LCD doesn't help with being able to see what time it is from afar. It was this custom big number font that stumped me most of the time when starting messing around with Arduino in like 2011. There's libraries for this already, but why take the easy solution when you can tackle the challenge and let it haunt you for years? I have mentioned drawing big numbers before on a 4x20 LCD in my pump track lap timer. However, I rewrote most of that code since that video was published. I knew that code was pure novice level, but I lacked the skill to improve the routines for drawing big numbers at the time. I mean, honestly, it was so poorly written, I didn't want to share it. I didn't know how to make it any better. But that was 2017, so let's walk through how to draw big numbers across a 4x20 LCD. The way this works is you can make custom characters or icons or graphics with the HD44780 based LCD library. The characters are a 5x8 pixel array, which can be coded as, to no surprise, an array. You can call this icon or graphic to be written to the screen at whatever position you want by setting the set cursor position. It's this framework that we're going to use to make the big format numbers. We're gonna build an array of blocks or segments that can be used to draw each number. This is where you can really make your own font style, but I went for the blockiest font possible for simplicity. Next, we have to make a lookup table to compare what the time is so we can draw our big numbers. That means look at the time and check the number for the ones and tens place for both the hours and minutes. When we get a match, we have to draw the number to the screen using a bunch of set cursor locations. This will draw the number one segment at a time from left to right, row by row, top to bottom. This last step can be done a few ways. I've left some of my legacy or novice ideas in the example as it helped me understand how to optimize and learn some new coding tricks. I'm just gonna cover one example. 
So if we look at the number six, we see all the blocks needed to build it. And I'll put all those specific segment blocks in an array, starting from the top row, left to right, to the bottom row, in that order. Then we're gonna set the cursor to the ones minute position and write the first three blocks by indexing the first three items in this array. It's for that custom character. Then we're just gonna set to the row below, write the next three items in the array, drop to the next row, and finally pull the last three items from the array. There are other ways to improve this code, but I'm still learning. So all we have to do is this for every single digit, making sure we identify if it's 10, then we have to change places and so on, do that for the hours location. Now I'm kind of treating this like it's a custom library, but it's not really a library. We just have all the subroutines in the core of the code. The numbers that I'm showing you right now are three by three character spaces large, but I also have another section of routines that will draw four by four character spaces to make really large numbers or huge numbers in this case. It was the work that I did on the previous clock and the what I guess was all the browser cookies saved from looking at Stack Overflow to build it that pushed this new project onto my radar. As a disclaimer, I did zero work on this magnificent clock. I just followed someone else's directions. Brian Locke's hardware that interfaces with a LED matrix really well was something I was using for my Sonic Pixel Frame. Then he combined that hardware with the Tetris animations and the Easy Time library to make this really nice Tetris clock. I just wanted to show this off because it's so cool. Like all the previous clocks, it grabs the time from an NTP server, but with the help of a 32 by 64 pixel RGB matrix, it builds the time with animated Tetris Tetraminos. Brian's code has options to only animate the digit that is changing along with fast or slow animation speeds. I prefer the entire screen refresh because the animations are just so cool and it's so novel, I just like looking at them. My contributions to this was catting some legs and that's how you can make a Tetris clock. This is my favorite timepiece and it's probably the best implementation of an ESP with Wi-Fi capabilities. It does require an ESP32 since the animations are pretty taxing on slower microcontrollers and Brian said that things don't quite work out as well. I've linked all of Brian's tutorials on this project down below. Well, I don't know how to end this video. Clocks are cool. Here's some video of some precision timekeeping. This video isn't sponsored by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, but that's a good resource for precision time and that's gonna be time.gov. All the code that I wrote for the two first examples, I'm going to provide links below. Happy timekeeping and thanks for watching.